welcome back in this chapter we will discuss about dynamic memory allocation right what is dynamic memory allocation what are the functions used in dynamic memory allocation right so majorly you have malloc calloc realloc and then the free function to release the memory right the first three functions are used to allocate the memory and the last one is used to free the memory now what does it mean dynamic memory allocation means allocating memory at run time so what is the difference between allocating memory at compile time versus run time let's see that so first let's understand the need for dynamic memory allocation right so let's look at this program in this program we are going to get a number of elements right from the user and then read each of those elements and find which of those elements is the maximum element so let's write the program for this so we have an array declared for 100 integers we are asking the user for the number of elements and in line 15 it says scan of percentage d ampersand n right so we are reading let's assume the user enters 3 right so it's going to read the three elements and then find out which is the maximum of the three elements right so let's run this program so it's going to ask for the number of elements i'm saying 3 and i'm entering the three values which is 2 3 and 1 and the program says the maximum element is 3. The program works fine, no problem with that. But here one challenge that we have is, when you look at it, there are 100 into 4, 400 bytes of memory allocated for this array. Right, so when we have 400 memory allocated, actually the user is going, in this case has given only 3 elements. Right, so only maximum of 12 bytes is required while we allocated 400 bytes of memory. Right. So, certain programs, memory is very, very critical. We cannot waste memory like this, right? In case of an array, we had to declare 100 elements because we were not sure how many elements the user is going to enter. Is it going to be 3, 50, 40, 70? So, we just took a number as 100, right? So, this program would even fail if the user says 300 numbers are being going to be entered, right? Because we have allocated space for only 100. Now, how do we tackle this problem, right? So let's look at dynamic memory allocation. So dynamic memory allocation is nothing but we'll get the n value from the user and after that actually allocate memory only for so many elements. Let's see how to do that. So we have made a change to this program. So we have included stdlib.h, right? So this is where malloc function is defined. So stdio.h is where your printf scan of everything, library functions are there. stdlib has malloc. Right, so what is happening here? So here instead of an array, we have a pointer, right? And we are saying that a equal to in star malloc of n into size of n. Basically, what we are doing is we are getting the n from the user. So the user enters 4. We will actually allocate 4 into size of n. 12 bytes of memory will be allocated, and a will point to that memory, right? And for each of those elements, after this, we can use it like an array, right? It's like we have allocated a memory. And for that memory, we have, um, we will actually use a, we will use it like an array. And there is no change to this part of the program, right? For all practical purposes, this part of memory is an array. And after we have used it, we have to use a free because we don't need that memory anymore, right? So this is called dynamic memory allocation. So during the runtime of the program, if n is 5, it will allocate 5 into 4, 20. If n is 20, it is going to allocate 80. If n is 300, it is going to allocate 300 into 4, 1200 bytes of memory. And we are casting it to an integer because we are assigning it to an integer pointer, right? So after that, we are reading the elements of the memory and we are finding the max element. Once we have used it, we will free the element. So let's see this program. So enter the number of elements, 3. So we are going to enter the three elements. So 3, 22, and 3, right? So maximum element is 22. So this program works. The best part here is it is dynamically allocated. So let's run this program with Python tutor. So now if you see, um, it allocates a memory. So 7 is the size. So we have allocated 7 bytes of memory or 7 integers which is 28 bytes of memory and your A points to that, right? So now for all practical purposes, it is 
same as an array and it parses like an array and once it is done when we free the memory that memory gets freed note that when we started here right when it allocated the memory it allocated in a memory segment called heap it is no more in stack it's in a different memory segment called heap whenever you do malloc it allocates here and when you do a free right at the end of the program when you do a free um, i just run this loop this memory gets freed out right so you see that this memory gets freed out it is returned back to the heap we don't no longer use it so here we have made an addition to this program a equal to null right so sometimes the heap might run out of memory for example the size of n if it is given as 100000 right the heap might not have i mean so many bytes of memory right so sometimes the heap might say that i don't have enough memory so always whenever you use dynamic memory make sure that whether the pointer returned to is null if the heap does not have enough memory it will immediately return a null here so another important practice is to set the size of the all the values to zero right when it gets the value from the heap it actually has junk characters garbage values so whenever malloc is done after the malloc is done usually it is a practice to set the entire memory to zero right that is we are setting this value zero for n into size of n bytes right that is the size of memory that we allocated so if you do this all these memory would be set to zero this is a very usual practice that this is done so we saw malloc malloc allocates the required size of bytes and return up returns a pointer to the first byte of the allocated space calloc allocate space for array elements initializes to zero automatically so you don't have to do a mem set and returns a pointer to that memory right so calloc allocates consecutive bytes of memory so free deallocates or frees up the memory that has been allocated sometimes you may want to change malloc might have initially allocated you may want to change the space size of space allocated you can use realloc in that case so now look let's look at dangling pointers and null pointer exceptions right so the same program right so here we are allocating memory right so and malloc has successfully allocated so ptr is null will not be true we are printing the base address here that for which we have allocated the memory and we are freeing the pointer right so this pointer points to somewhere we don't know where it's pointing now because we have freed the pointer now if you try to increment the pointer right again it points to some other place we don't know where it is pointing right that memory is no more valid you are not supposed to read or write into that memory this is called a dangling pointer right now if you try to write to this memory it will crash the program so here you see that invalid write of size 4 stop running after first error please fix your code right so i mean python tutor is very graceful that it gives this error in most of the programming i mean when you do with any other compiler right it would just crash the program you wouldn't even understand why it happened so let's be very careful with the pointers so we need to make sure that we are whatever is the memory allocated we should operate within that when we move outside of that memory and try to access it it will definitely crash the program so we read double pointers earlier right we were not sure why we need double pointers so now let's look at the use of double pointers let's assume we have to do a matrix addition of two matrices right so it's going to be we don't know the dimensions of the matrix we are going to get the value of m and n from the user right the number of rows and number of columns from the user and then we have to get the matrix from the user right so we will use dynamic memory allocation for it because in a static memory if you are using array so it's very difficult to find out whether it is going to be 3 by 3 4 by 4 so you cannot allocate a memory for that um, using arrays right so it's much easier to do it with dynamic memory allocation so you will exactly allocate only the number of bytes required so let's take a case here number of rows and column so here scan up doesn't work in python tutor so we are initializing right so we will assume that there are four rows and three columns for which we have to allocate so first what we need to do is we have to allocate for the rows and then for the columns let's see how it works right it's easier to explain when it runs first thing is from the double pointer we have to allocate memory for pointers right these are single pointers each one will point to an array right so these are in stars now once that in stars are done 
for each of those instars, we have to allocate the number of columns required, right? So we have three columns and we have four rows. So for each of those rows, we'll have the columns related values, right? So four rows, each row having three columns, we have allocated. So first we allocated this, which is the int star, which is the total number of rows that we have. Each row is an integer pointer. Now for each of the pointers, next we allocated an array, uh, I mean allocated a malloc of number of columns. So we have three columns, right? This is how we have allocated the memory here. So now you can add value and you can access it like a normal 2D array, right? There is no difference here between this and a normal 2D array, right? So you can store the values here within the array and uh, use it. Now this is how a double pointer is really useful and helpful to dynamically determine the size of an array. So in summary, in this chapter, we saw about dynamic memory allocation. This really helped us understand the use of pointers, why double pointers are required, what is malloc, what is calloc, what is memset, what is realloc, what is free, what is a dangling pointer, right? And we also saw how to allocate a two-dimensional array, convert a double pointer into a 2D array.